I found a way to make one of the most popular dividend investing strategies even better. In this video, I'll narrow down a list of the best dividend stocks to three that need to be on your radar. We're talking dividend stocks to buy in February today on Let's Talk Money. Beat day. Make money. Make your money work Creating for you. Creating the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel. A special shout out to everyone in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. So everyone in the nation knows by now how much I love dividends. In fact, most of my portfolio is in dividend stocks or, or some kind of income investment. And one of the best dividend investing themes you can follow are what's called the dividend aristocrats. Now the aristocrats are any company in the S&P 500 index. So we're talking very large US based companies that have increased their dividend for at least 25 consecutive years. So some things to work out from that. First is that these are amazing dividend payers. Just over the last 25 years, we've seen two major stock market crashes, including the worst recession in 80 years. We've seen an Asian financial crisis, multiple financial crises in Europe and a banking crisis in Europe. For a company to be able to increase its dividend every single year through all of that, that is commitment to shareholder cash return. It also means that this list of dividend aristocrats changes every year. Uh, some stocks are added as they hit that 25th year of increase. Others get dropped if they miss a year. Now, I like this theme so much that I suggested it in our 12 month investing plan, that step by step plan to start investing and grow your first thousand dollar portfolio. So I'll leave a link to that in the video description below. But if you're just investing in all the aristocrats, like with the ProShares S&P Aristocrats ETF, that's ticker NOBL, then I think you're missing out on some upside potential in your portfolio. That's why for this video and our February dividend picks, I want to show you how to pick the top three stocks from this already amazing group. I'm putting these stocks into my M1 finance account and we'll be adding to this portfolio each month with the three new stocks. I'm using M1 here because of that auto invest tool that's going to be reinvesting my dividends and the ability to invest evenly across all the stocks in my portfolio with just one click. I'll leave a link to M1 in the description below this video so you can follow the portfolio. Now here's all 64 of the dividend aristocrats up from 57 last year and the seven new ads are at the top of that third column starting with Amcor and down to international expeditors. Again, that entire list isn't a bad place to start for your dividend investing, but I don't want to invest in this entire group. All these pay really good dividends, but factoring in price losses, some have severely underperformed the market over the last two years. You've got Stanley Black & Decker, ticker SWK, and Pintair, ticker PNR. They've barely squeaked out positive returns if you include those dividends over those last two years. So I want to narrow that list down to three that I think can do really well over the next year and even longer. I'll be using some of the old favorites for picking these stocks, like sales growth and that operating margin better than their sector average. I'll also be looking at valuation, so how expensive are shares on that price to earnings basis? Of course, I'm not going to be picking dividend stocks without looking at that dividend yield as well. So we'll be looking at that and finally any catalyst that could send these shares higher. And a few of these fac factors are ones that I always look at and are really important if you're going to be picking stocks. So things like that operating margin, basically the sales income left after paying suppliers and all the costs to run a business. So it's really the operating income divided by sales to give you a percentage margin. And this is my favorite measure by far for how well a company is run, how well management is converting sales into profits. Now, I know investing can seem like another language sometimes, especially when you're just starting out. When I started in 1999, while I was still in the Marine Corps, I didn't know an operating margin from an operating table. So I wanted to put together a quick start guide for stock analysis, a quick couple of pages with the five factors that I use to compare stocks and the investing terms that every investor needs to know. This is a great resource, everything you need to get started picking stocks in five minutes. So I'll leave a link to that free download in the description below this video. PepsiCo ticker PEP is our first pick and it's 2.7% dividend really isn't that high, but when you factor in total return on the shares, this is a solid investment. Shares of Pepsi have produced an 11.5% annual return over the last decade, above that 10% annual return on shares of Coke. And I gotta tell you, I like the taste of Coca-Cola better, but the fundamentals for Pepsi go down a whole lot easier. Between the two, they control over 70% of the non-alcoholic beverage market, and that gives them both massive pricing and distribution power. Uh, Pepsi's annual sales are almost exactly twice that of Coca-Cola though, and its payout ratio leaves a whole lot more room for growth. Pepsi pays out just 68% of its earnings to cover that dividend, versus Coca-Cola which needs 78% of its earnings to cover their dividend. Shares of Pepsi don't come cheap though, something you're going to see a lot in those stocks in the consumer staple sector, trading for a price of 25 times earnings. 
Now, profits are expected about 4% higher over the next year, so I would put them closer to 6% given that management's history of beating expectations. We see a broad band of price targets for the 11 analysts covering Pepsi, with a low target around $115 and a high of $155 per share. Now, despite these lackluster targets, though, this is one I think you can put in your portfolio, forget about, and you'll always know it's gonna produce. Next here is Kimberly Clark, ticker KMB. This is a $45 billion personal care products giant paying a 3% dividend yield. What I really like about Kimberly Clark, besides the fact that it's only paying about 61% of its profits to cover the dividend, which is gonna leave a lot of that room for growth, what I love here is that the company has been reinvesting an average of $5 billion annually over the last five years into that product development and marketing. And you just don't see that level of reinvestment at its competitors. So what I think could happen in the coming years is that KMB reaps those benefits with that faster revenue growth and the cash flow. Now shares trade for 21 times earnings, which are expected 5.8% higher over the next year. But I think those surprise revenues start to play out here. Analysts have a low target of $123 a share and a high of $155 each for the stock over the next year. And I really like this up at least up to that $150 per share for a long-term bet. Now if you like Tesla, then you should love shares of Albert Marley, ticker ALB, the world's largest lithium producer. Now, lithium is the powerhouse for electric vehicle batteries, so if you believe in that long-term push for electric, this is going to be one to watch. The problem, of course, is that lithium producers are paying for the huge supply growth earlier in the decade. Annual supply is now just 5% over demand, and the global average price has plunged 50% since late 2017. That's a pretty common story in mining and commodities ma makers though, okay? Miners are always ramp up their production to oversupply levels when those prices are good and, and then they get shocked when prices crash. It happens all the time, but if you can time it so you get in right around the bottom of that supply and demand curve, you can usually do really well on these. In fact, I actually recommended ALB last December in our best stocks for the material sectors, part of that stock sector series, and it looks like this one is turning around because it's already up 32% in the last month, well over that market return. Now, the lower price is squeezing out a lot of the higher cost lithium producers. Uh, ALB owns some of the lowest cost mines in Chile and only about a billion in net debt, so this has definitely got that financial power to survive while some of those other producers fall out of the picture. Shares trade for 15 times earnings, though profits are expected about 8% lower over the next year as the market works through some of that excess lithium supply. Demand for battery quality lithium is expected to double through 2025, and ALB is expanding capacity from 65,000 tons last year to 155,000 tons by the end of 2021 to meet that demand. If that demand keeps increasing as it's expected to do, it could very quickly turn profits higher for the next few years. Analysts are torn on this stock though, with a low estimate of $41 a share and a high around $109 for that widest range that we're going to see in this list. Click on the video to the right for that entire 12-month investing plan, what to watch for each month, and exactly how much to invest for a $1,000 portfolio by the end of the year. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.